So we have already made two videos covering Steam Input for the Steam Deck, but the truth is I have yet to really scratch the surface of what Steam Input is capable of, and what you can do with your Steam Deck. In this video, we will discuss the D-pad, face buttons, and analog sticks, what they're capable of, as well as your shoulder buttons and triggers. The truth is that this entire Steam Input thing is a massive rabbit hole that you'll never want to climb out of. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, and join my Discord server. Last time I made a Steam Input video, I focused on the trackpads because I know a lot of people wouldn't know how to make use of these dual trackpads. Now we're looking at more familiar input methods, everything else on a controller. For this video, I'll be using a DualShock 4 because the Steam controller is missing a D-pad as well as a right stick. It also has analog triggers, which is more in line with what the deck has. So something interesting to note is that the D-pad, analog sticks, face buttons have most of the same options that a trackpad would. Even if it really wouldn't make sense or you can't actually make use of it. For example, you can configure your D-pad as a radial menu even though logistically speaking it wouldn't make much sense. And it also straight up doesn't work. I've also tried this with the touch menu and as you can see here it doesn't really work out. I think having a touch menu work on D-pad would be pretty sick actually, if it worked that is. Interestingly though, the hotbar menu actually works. As you can see here, I'm making myself a little bit of a rudimentary hotbar menu. I guess this works because of the nature of the hotbar menu and how you control it. You press down on the D-pad to pull up the menu, left or right to select, and up to actuate the option. It makes sense really. Also, I wouldn't recommend setting the D-pad or face buttons to be any sort of analog stick option for obvious reasons. You also have analog triggers. The first option you can mess with is full pull. The second option is soft pull. Full pull is when you bottom out your analog stick. Soft pull is almost like a half press on your trigger. Soft pull trigger style is arguably the most important setting here. Depending on the style you pick, it can determine whether or not soft pulls activate at all or when it activates. You'll have to try each individual style to see which one fits you. The most obvious use case I can think of would be to aim down sights with soft pull and then a full pull would pull the trigger. I have it set that so that if you press down on the right trigger fast enough, it bypasses the need to aim down sights. This style of control can be a little finicky on a DualShock 4 as opposed to say a Steam controller with its dual stage triggers. If you were to master this style of input, you could free up your left trigger for two different actions. Talk about efficiency. And one more thing, the analog sticks and face buttons have the same options as your trackpads. In fact, a radial menu on an analog stick would be pretty cool. So aside from a base level analysis of these control inputs, let's talk about some more interesting binding options for your controls. So when you're assigning buttons to your options, you can see this row of icons up here. Ever wonder what these do? Let's explore them. The first menu option pulls up the on-screen keyboard in case you need to type. You can do this to chat or you can do this to access, say, a game's in-game console. So you could either select each individual letter to type out or you could use your dual trackpads to do a unique method of typing similar to, say, texting on your phone. One caveat is a lot of PC games require you to press another button to pull up the chat window to begin with. So pulling up a keyboard by itself it doesn't really do much. We'll go over a remedy for this soon. The second option makes the button a screenshot button. I would have said it was useful, but there's a built-in Steam Cord hotkey. Hold down your guide button and press right trigger. The next option is a move cursor option. You either use your mouse or your stick to move the cursor into a said position. And then you choose whether or not you want to leave it at that new position or return it to your old position. This option can be a little funky if you're not using a standard aspect ratio. Something like an ultra wide monitor in my case. So when you press the button, it moves the cursor there. Or if you selected return to old position, it snaps to that new option and then goes back to the old position immediately. The next option is toggle magnifying glass. 
It's an OS level feature, so I can't really showcase it. It basically just zooms in. The next one has a bunch of system options. You can turn off your controller, turn off your system, turn off Steam. There's a lot of random system options in here that you can make use of. The next option changes the LED lights on your controller. In my case, I have a DualShock 4, so I can change the color of the light bar. The next option allows you to manipulate your Steam music player. Play and pause, next track, etc, etc. I don't know a lot of people that use Steam music, so... The second to last option makes your button do nothing. The last button allows you to change your controller port. This would be useful if you were, say, emulating Metal Gear Solid 1 on the PS1, or if you did some kind of two-player thing. Of all of these various options, I would say the most useful one would be the Move Cursor option. In combination with some other actions, this can be extremely powerful. So let's go over this. Toggle multi-button on or off. This allows you to assign multiple actions on the same button, essentially creating a combo button, if you will. It's to my understanding that there's no real limit to how many buttons you can assign on a single multi-button. There's a couple of interesting use cases for this, however. Remember how I mentioned that some games require you to press a button to pull up the chat window? You can combine that button with the pull up keyboard window, and it pulls up the keyboard and the chat window at the same time. Now you're ready to socialize. You can assign all of these options and more on buttons, or perhaps you can assign them on the various menus, such as the hotbar menu, radial menu, or touch menu. Even the multi-button ones. Here's another way to use multi-button. This one will make use of the move cursor option. You can essentially have the cursor move to that position and then click on that position. Turn on multi-button, select your cursor position, and then also bind left mouse button as well. My personal preference is that you set it to return to old position. Like the other options, this can be done on a single button or you can set it as a radial menu option. This gives you a powerful way to navigate mouse only menus. With this current configuration, I have it set so that it pulls up this quest tab. While this quest tab has an in-game hotkey, not all menus in this game do, but now you can make your own. I would say I covered a decent amount of Steam input. But the truth is, I've really hardly scratched the surface of what this thing can do. I would say every video I've made about Steam input up to this video is a base level view of these options, and I'm confident most gamers would understand what these are. That said, it's not the individual options, but rather how you combine them that makes this whole system more than a sum of its parts. I would say the system is simple enough for people to understand, but it gives you the flexibility you need to be more advanced. I would say most gamers don't need to engage with this system, but I think for the hardcore players that want more out of the controllers, you should. Next time we'll cover activators and what they are.